For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That, that's from Isaiah chapter 14. Go find it. Okay, you go find it. Okay, <laughs> we read verses 13 on to verse 14 in Isaiah chapter 14 from the authorized version of the scriptures. This is a response. This is a response video. You know, atheists, uh, saints, this video is not intended for you. You already know this. Atheists. Where do we get our morals from? Hmm? What's the atheistic answer? That man evolved a complex system of morality over millions and billions of years. <laughs> and yet, today... Here in America, okay, legalized murder, abortion, the pornography epidemic, the sexualization of America and in everything you see, uh, sodomy rampant through Disney and all these other things, um, uh, pedophilia being pushed, huh? And this ridiculous argument over gender stuff and like that, and stuff like that, okay? Is that man evolving into a better moral compass? Huh? Atheist? You're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. Okay? You're a fool. A fool says in his heart there is no God. Okay? If man from his own being comes up with his own system of morals... What is it? Oh, I'm the God of my little world. Well, that's good for you. That's good for you. You know what I'm going to do then? I'm going to take a billy club and I'm going to bash your brains in. It's like, you can't do that to me. It's like, yeah, I can. Because I'm the little God of my world. And it's okay for me to take a billy club and bash your brains in. See, when man is their own standard, you ask him for trouble. But see... The atheist is, is exactly what we looked at. This is the atheist. Verses 13 and 14 in Isaiah 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Ye shall be as gods. Okay? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Above the stars of God. Every single one of you atheists. Okay? Every, brethren, every time you run into an atheist... Um, get on them about that. You, you call them a lie. You lie. You atheists. You liars. You do believe in the God. I'm going to annoy you to no end with saying that to you. Okay? Because it's the truth. You do believe in the God. It's yourself. Okay? And when you are your own God, bloop, this is what happens. And your morality as man is flawed from its inception. We're going to touch on that. Okay? But this is, this is you atheists. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The previous video. You're up on that mountain, boy. Yeah. Uh-huh. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. There you go. That's you atheist. That's you atheist. You're not an atheist. Okay, you're not. You don't exist in that sphere of reality. In your little, little fantasy world, sure, you know, with the millions and billions of years ago, yeah, your little 
fictitious fantasy world. Just, sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and play with your little dolls, okay? All right? Hmm. So, if man is his own moral compass, then, then anything, man! <laughs> but see, this is not the case. And see, man wants to be exactly this. This, in Isaiah chapter 14, is Satan. Satan's sin was pride. Okay? This Satan is saying of himself. I will, you know, this is what he's saying in his heart. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Okay? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. This is Satan. And see, when you atheists say, well, I'm the master of my own destiny. I am. I will. I will. You're like Satan because he's your father. We've covered, we covered that in the previous video, but I'm going to drill this into your head again. I'm going to annoy you. Lost person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Our judgment as mankind is flawed. And it started that way after the fall. It's very simple. God made a garden. God put Adam in there. Gave him Eve. Okay? Said, you can do whatever you want, just don't do that. Satan comes around. He has that said. Ah, don't worry about it. The day you eat thereof, you won't, you, you'll not, you, will shall, you shall not surely die. But in the day ye eat thereof, do contrary to what God said, then your eyes will be open and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And hence the snowball effect ever since. Okay? Even beyond the flood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Even beyond the flood. And see, because man made the choice to disobey, we're all born... A well, hey, atheist, if you want to believe this or not, that doesn't matter. We're all descended from Adam and Eve. Okay? We didn't matriculate or just appear out of nowhere or develop over millions of days. That's a little fairy tale, okay? That's fantasy, okay? You live in a fantasy world, all right? That's not reality. The reality is you were created by the Lord Jesus Christ who is God the Father. You might not want to believe that. A majority of you don't. That's irrelevant. You're going to find out. But most of you, you're going to find out when it's too late and you can't do anything about it, see? But after that, after the Garden of Eden, okay, after that, when sin came in because of man, hence the decline in man, okay? However, we were made in the image of God. Now, that's a twofold thing. We were made, mankind was made originally sinless, and uh, immortal, okay? Sinless and immortal. And you can make a valid argument that uh, man was also created at least vegetarian or maybe vegan in the very beginning of the creation. That uh, Titus Morris kid, um, he, he holds it. He wants to be a vegan. That he's, he's skinny as a rail. It looks lethargic. God bless his heart. Okay, he, he himself... Titus Morris, I, I talked to some of you about that kid. Uh, he, he himself, as a vegan, goes to that. Well, we were created. Yes, we were. You can make a very valid argument. But see, he's part Amish and stuff like that in the Amish. His Holiness has tremendous videos. Give the credit where it's due. His Holiness has an incredible line of videos exposing the Amish and their beliefs and stuff like that. Give him the credit where it's due. He did that stuff on the Amish. Perfect. Not perfect. The Lord is perfect. But, I mean, he did great work on that. Can't take that away from him, okay? But Titus Morris holds to that, you know. And, hey, today you want to be a vegan? Knock yourself up. Knock yourself up. Go right ahead. Go run headlong into a wall if you want. Go right ahead. 
Okay, that's what Romans chapter 14 is talking about. We're not supposed to judge one another in something that we eat. Okay, that's when we as saints, if I'm eating my greasy cheeseburger and there's my brother over there just eating leafy greens and he's going to judge me or I'm going to judge him, one of us could say legitimately, scripturally, it's like, hey, don't judge me. <laughs> Context. By what I mean, my big old fat greasy cheeseburger, grease going down, my heart's hardening and stuff like that. To him with his vegetarians and have to have a handful of pills to get the nutrients that they're lacking, actually. Okay? Forgive that little rabbit trail. Okay? But, like I said, at the very beginning, we were created immoral and sinless. After disobedience, okay, that was lost obviously. Yet we are still created in the image of God, meaning we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay, God is comprised of three. He has a spirit, he has a soul, he has a body. The Johannian comma that the Jesuit Christians like to talk about. The Johannian comma. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Okay? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, Trinitarians try to turn that into saying that it's people. It's not. Three different persons. It's one person who is comprised of spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We're made in the image of God. That does not cease. But that at the original creation of immortality and sinlessness, once we'd done mankind, once we disobeyed in the Garden of Eden, I say we because we're descended. You know, hey, you don't want to admit that or accept that. That's your problem. Okay? That doesn't change the fact that you and I are descended from Adam and Eve. Period. We did not come from a rock. It's crazy. Okay? <laughs> That's crazy. All right? Uh, the, we didn't come out of an Easter egg. Okay? We weren't a sniveling piece of snot that wiggled out of the ocean and just laid there in the baking sun or what? That, That's... <laughs> no wonder some of you uh, guys uh, like that Star Wars stuff. <laughs> you live in a fantasy world, boy! <laughs> Fantasy. Absolute grotesque fantasy. But see, after the fall, sin was brought in by man. And that image of immortality and sinlessness was lost in disobedience. See, this is why these ridiculous, crazy, sleazy believers are so dangerous. These idiots willfully... <laughs> Okay, they're idiots. They want you to believe that it was faith alone in the Garden of Eden. That's insane. It, you, can't, you can't prove that. Rather, you can prove that it was pure works. Okay? You sleazy believers are just, just chafe my buttocks with that. Okay, you do. All right? And you do say that it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden when you can be proven dead wrong by reading the account to you guys. That's crazy. And yes, to you too, Mr. Sunken Face. Okay? Trying to say that it was by faith through by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You're whacked. Okay? You're whacked. But see, when man disobeyed, sin came in and then it got booted out. But see, we are made in the image of God, having a spirit, a soul, and a body. That hasn't changed. But see, since that sinlessness and immortality was lost because of disobedience, man started to gradually decline in years until eventually the Lord put a time limit of 120 years. And then you, you can read that in Scripture. It wasn't rapido. It was gradual. It was gradual. Deception works in little morsels. Whereas truth, at the first, you give them little morsels of truth so they can digest it instead of taking the whole of scripture and cramming it down their throat. You know, I've unfortunately done that. You know, that's my bad, okay? But 
over little and little. Satan has used the same principle, but to sow seeds of deception. Example, Roman Catholicism from its inception. One God in three persons. And then, yet, they're one God, but they're three persons. Atheist, Muslim, if you watch, go ahead and laugh. Ha ha ha! It's ridiculous madness. It is. It is. But over the centuries, you go up to one of these Christians, to, don't do this. <laughs> and when you the thing of the Trinity comes up, get your point across, it's like, <clears throat> spit on the ground in their presence, like, that's why I think you're a Trinity. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I've, I've done that, okay? <laughs> don't, don't, I'm not saying to do that. It gets the point across, but, but, the reaction, the reaction. Well, Brad, you're spitting on the ground in front of, I'll give you that, I'll give you that, I'll give you that, sure. But see, even, even apart from that, when you talk about that disgusting trinity, what it's based on uh, off of the, the female matrix, female reproductive uh, system, okay? Got a video on that, okay? Um, when you start to showing them this, like, hey, dude, this is, this is your trinity. It's of Satan. It's, it's nonsense. Because of the conditioning that came from Rome over centuries, they're ready to blow your head off, man. It comes by little and little, by gradual things, okay? And if man is gradually making his own morals, setting his own compass, <laughs> and there are atheists who say that this is evolution, man getting better? I, I don't smoke, and I don't smoke marijuana, but you know what? I gotta tell you something. If you, whatever you smoke, and you need to share some, boy, that's just that's insanity. To think that mankind presently is getting better. But there are, and their excuse, well, they has to, you know, get worse before. Just shut up. Just shut up. Where do our morals come from? They come from the Lord. They come from God. And see, you, you don't want to accept that. That's your problem. Okay, even you wicked devil. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. You're made in the image of God. Your belief on that is irrelevant. Why do you instinctively know certain things are right and certain things are wrong? Hmm? Now, some less than others, but nonetheless... There's always that something there. Hmm? Why is that? Why is that? You could say residual or whatever, but why is that? Because man is made in the image of God, and man instinctively knows that, wait a minute, some things are I shouldn't be doing. Okay? Now, from the time of a child, you know, a little baby, a little infant, it doesn't know anything. Okay? If it could, in order to get that bottle, it bludgeon you to death not knowing. But see, therein, you take the scriptures out of people's hands and give them a Bible. Okay? You take true worship away in the home between father and mother and children and replace it with them. It's like, damn man, man! What happens? This is what happens. Father and mother are supposed to bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? But even apart from that, people will grow up and know instinctively like, hey, I shouldn't be doing this. And they talk about, well, you can kill their conscience. They've killed their conscience. You can't kill your conscience. Jeffrey Dahmer, who's in heaven, he never killed his conscience. He, <laughs> he just drowned it in alcohol. You know, Charles Manson, he never... You can't kill your conscience. You know when you get yourself a good ribeye steak 
a ribeye or so, or a filet mignon, okay? What do you do? You get it, you throw it on that grill and then you put a press on it or you just leave it there and then it sears the one side. You, many of you know what I'm talking about. Then you flip it over and then it gets that burn and the lines in it and it sears it. And then it, it's the steak sears itself. So when you get that steak, it made me hungry. And then you put that steak on the plate and you cut it open and it just bursts out. Sear. Okay? You can sear your conscience. You can't kill it. Or the scripts are lying. And people will come up with, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? In one way, shape, or form, or of another. Laws of God were written on man's hearts. But what's the problem? Oh, one second, I got to do this. One second. I've done this on several occasions, and several of you have like, whoa. You know what the, what the problem is? God is not... Holding a loaded gun to your head. Forcing you to do what he wants you to do. You have free will. And got to do it this way, too. Neither is Satan. See, this is loaded. See that? Satan is not holding a loaded gun to your head either. Okay? He's not. You have free will. Unlike what the Calvinist wants you to believe. Okay? Unlike uh, even some atheists want you to believe that, well, God's not all about free will. Uh, yes, he is. Because if he wasn't, all of us would either be dead or the entire world would be serving him out of um, um, not willful submission, but out of slavery. And guess what? God doesn't want robots. You have to make the right choice. And you decide. And there you go. You decide whether you're going to do what's right according to what God says, or you're going to go walk along and follow your father, the devil. But in Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6, and of course, and a brother put a really good verse about the scoffing in the previous video that I saw. Um, lots of people are going to scoff at this. But see, if you watch this, you're, you won't be ignorant about it. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay? And this is right before the flood. Okay? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And also verses 12 on to verse 13 now, skipping a little here. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, of course, the earth was not destroyed. This is where the people come up with that nonsense like this is the second earth or third earth or whatever. No, he didn't destroy the earth. Or else it's lying in uh, the book of Revelation where it's like, this, where it says the first earth. We're still on the first earth. So it wasn't destroyed. It was just everything on it, not the earth itself. Okay? Okay, that's what that means. All right? So... The wickedness of man's heart, uh, his, uh, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is um, the dispensation known as the patriarchs, by the way. You lost people in atheists, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's okay. 
Okay. All right. We, we, we need to get your attention first, boy. Now, in another dispensation, very well known to the saints. Um, to you lost people, not so. Jeremiah uh, 17. Now, we just looked at a part where God said that in a dispensation, a different uh, dispensation before the law. Under the law. Okay. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Okay? All right? That's under the law. And... Oh, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves here, but I just wanted to show that to you, okay? Because of the fall, man is not good. The imaginations are always wicked. Your heart is deceitful. You don't know your own heart. And you trying to justify yourself by coming up with these complex morality things like the Jesuits do, or like the Te Ta, uh, Tao Te Ching thing, okay? It always falls flat on its face. Why? Because it's not divinely inspired of God. Okay? But it does come from a God, yourself. And your father is the little G God, Satan. You see how this works? Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 29 out of verse 31. Oh, that they were wise, wise, wisdom is equated with the fear of the Lord, okay? That they understood this, that they would consider their latter end, and oh, brother, sister, these kids who were messing around with their gender, showing contempt to, for the Lord, for what he made. You know, these people getting tattoos, of, you know, all over themselves, doing all kinds of crazy things to their body. I could say that because I did it myself as a lost man, okay? You're not considering your latter end. Like, uh, what was his name? Man, not Mantis. Mantle, the baseball guy. Several people have said this, actually. If I knew I was going to live so long, I would have taken better care of myself. <laughs> right? 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 See, you don't consider your latter end. And hold your place there if, if you're following along. Uh, saints are. Saints are. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. This is the closest that I have discovered to the, you've heard, only the good die young, but uh, the evil seem to live forever. Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Hmm. Only the good die young, but yet it seems the evil live forever. This is the closest I found in Scripture to that. Okay, even though you can be like a Fred, but I know, I know. But verse 2, he shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Okay, now verses 1 and 2 here, uh, is this a direct parallel or a direct reference on the redemption of the purchase possession? It sounds good. I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do know is what I read there, and it sure does fit, doesn't it? Sure does. But see, the point is, you know, saints are being taken away. And who's replacing them? Devils. <laughs> because man doesn't want truth. Okay? Back to Deuteronomy 32. Why? Because it's all about now. It's your best life now. 
What are you going to do if you live to be my age, 50 years of age? Almost 50. I'm 49. Okay, what are you going to do? Huh? You don't care because you're in the moment. You're a slave to a television. You're a slave to a health phone or a tablet. Right? Right? You're a slave to your lust. And your lust is that you are your own God. Oh, that they would, uh, were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital, our rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their, I love this verse, for their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital uh, case r, even our enemies themselves being judges. You shall know them by their fruits. The uh, difference between capital and lowercase, the little G God of this world, Satan, capital R, rock, our Father, our Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? And that rock that followed him was Christ. Okay? <laughs> All right? See, you lost people and you atheists, you devils, who try to make a play at uh, religion. But you fall flat on your face because you're not saved. But you lost people and atheists. You are your own spiritual, moral compass, you think. Huh. And you are. And there you go. There you go. That's what happens when man rejects God. That is what happens. Okay? Psalm 81. And see, what we just looked at in Deuteronomy 32, oh, that they were wise. You have a choice. You have a choice. Again, dear friend. Again, dear friend. God is not holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do it. Neither is Satan forcing you to do anything. Okay? And my dear friend from England, I know you wish I would just pull this trigger. Ain't happening, buddy. Okay? All right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't even got time for your worthlessness. Okay? But, but, see, you got to make the right choice. God doesn't want a robot. And so many of you have chosen yourself. And there you go. Psalm 81. Psalm 81, the loaded gun thing, I have been informed by several, uh, actually quite a few, many people, that um, some were horrified. It's like, Brad, you're pointing a loaded gun. It's like, yeah. But others that have contacted me, they're like, I've never seen, they called me a preacher. It's like, I've never seen a preacher do that before. Well, <laughs> you got the point, didn't you? Okay. But Psalm 81, not 86, Brad. Psalm 81, verses 8 to the close of the psalm. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Free will, freedom to choose. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. And the previous video, which will be in the description box, the, the links in there, we talk about this stuff. The strange God, is it always, is it always a statuette? No. Uh, the statuette, the idol is an extension of you wanting to worship yourself. Okay? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Today, in this dispensation, the Lord died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross, making an atonement for our sins, you know, in the death, burial, and resurrection. He would rather save you than to see you go to hell. That is truth. But he's not forcing you to come to him. And when you reject him, his wrath is for you. You are his enemy. God does not love you. Okay? He doesn't. 
You want his love? You got to go his way. Not yours. And that's what Christianity does. They want to go their own way. Not his way. And his way is the way of the cross. The way of the cross. Got to write that down. <laughs> his way is the way of the cross. What is the cross? Death. But it also is new life. But you got to die. You got to die first before you can be born again. You got to be broken before you can be fixed. You understand? But see, you got to go his way. Broken of your self-righteousness. Oh yeah, I'm saying it again. Contrite. Being a man or a woman. Taking responsibility because you put him on the cross and having the hell scared out of you. And in that, those things that happens in one fell swoop and lost people can't understand that because they haven't been through it. Especially the sleazy believers. They skip over those things and get right to the, as they like to say, get to the important thing. Uh, how you arrive at that is equally, if not more so, important. Because the devils also believe in trouble. Okay? But see, you come the Lord's way, he saves you. You want saved, always saved. But you skip over those things. That's why these people don't understand that. It happens in one fell swoop. Okay? It happens in one fell swoop. The Lord has a specific way. But see, man wants to go their own way. Verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Thank you, too, by the way. <laughs> it's right there. It's like I said to the one um, individual, you know, in common. The Lord was to appear before you, you wouldn't believe him anyway. Just like if on the cross, they were saying, come down and we'll believe you. If the Lord came down, they would have stoned him saying, that's the devil. Ow. They didn't want it. And because you don't want it, so I gave them up unto their own hearts lust. And they walked in their own councils. And we already looked at what God says of your heart. And he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Proverbs 28, I believe that is. Brother, could you please, thank you, if I don't put it, if I don't put it in the description box, I might, if I remember, okay? So you don't want to do it the Lord's way, fine. There you go, do it your way. And there you go. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord, you atheists, you sleazy believists, you Catholics, you Calvinists, some of you Baptists, all you charismatics. Okay, the list goes on and on. You Buddhists, you Hinduists, you Muslims, you Jehos, you Mormons, Mormons. Okay, the list goes on. There is only one way. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have soon subdued their enemies and turned my, turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. Should have. See, making the right choice. See, God's powerful enough to force you. But God's equally as powerful to allow you to reject him. You, 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 don't, you don't take the time to think about what that means in the aspect of how great is our God. Okay? He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock. Honey out of the rock, yeah, that's a lowercase r, but should I have satisfied thee? 
Our morals come from the Lord. You're the one who just doesn't want to accept that, believe it or adhere to it. Period. And there's a way to do that. Jesus Christ. And you know what? He'll give you his word. He, seal, he, he seals you with himself. And then he is going to guide you onto this. You're not, did, did you, you Christians out there, you ain't going to tell me. You give me a break. You think that the Lord is going to guide you to use an NIV, an ESV, or the LSD thing that Jesuit James White is now promoting from his buddy, John MacArthur? You think the Lord is going to guide you onto something that spits in his face? You're crazy. You are crazy. It's a matter of preference. No, you're right. The Lord's preference. The Lord chose the authorized version. The King James Version as it is referred to. This is his perfect and errant given by inspiration word. Your preference has nothing to do with it. His does. He chose this. You're going to try to tell me that the Lord guided you to use an NIV? <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay? But no, see, you are of your father the devil. And when you want to choose for yourself, man, you, you got, you know, all things are lawful for you, pal. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah, all things are lawful for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Because again, God's not holding a gun to your head. Isaiah 1, verses 1 on to verse 6. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. He has to, he's appealing to the innate things here, like heavens and earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. And I like this comparison onto, like you atheists and a lot of you Christians, the ox knows his owner. Beasts have a body and a spirit. I was talking about this with a brother just a day or two ago. It's like, it'd be nice, it'd be nice if Fritz is going to be in heaven. That was my last cat. Spaz, my little um, um, special needs cat that I had. It'd be nice to see Spaz up there. Deaf had circuit problems, uh, seizures and whatnot. Uh, it was, yeah, Spaz. It'd, it'd be nice to see her, see the little Spaz up there. Nico, golden retriever. Duke, our pit bull. Lucky Juan Valdez, the little uh, Chihuahua. Um, it would be nice to see them. But uh, it says, as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. You're not going to see your pets in heaven. The brother asked us, like, well, are there going to be pigs in heaven? I don't know. I don't think so. Because, you know, the... The trees and the stuff, it's going to be perfected again to where, I mean, there may be animals in heaven, yes, but are they going to be the ones like our pets? No, that, no. There may be, I don't know. But the point I'm getting at is your animals are not going to be in heaven because they're not, they don't have, they have a spirit, they have a body, but they do not have a soul, okay? That's significant here because the ox knows his owner who has no soul, unlike man, and the ass his master's crib, donkey. That's what an ass is. Keep your profane filth out of here, okay? So, a beast that has a spirit and a uh, body, but no soul, he's comparing them knowing the owner and his master's crib to man who ought to know, but Israel doth not know, 
my people doth not consider. And you atheist people consider yourselves wise, uh, but doing that, you're fools. You, you have to be educated to be that stupid. And, of course, who educates you? Satan, to the Jesuit order. Yeah, 57 channels and nothing on, right? All right, okay. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You reject God, and he's appealing and making comparison how an ox and an ass is more righteous in this context than man. You ever dealt with donkeys before? Some of the most pompous, stubborn creatures you will ever meet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The pompous ass. I mean, I, I've told the story before about how the donkey knew how to take the chain, link chain out of the gate, go out of there, go into the feed room and almost kill itself and just stand there and look at you like, look at me, I got out. <laughs> Brazenly. Asses, you know, donkeys, they, they, they're like that. And see, in this context, the Lord is, in that context, the comparison is that <laughs> the ox knows his owner, knoweth his owner, and he has his master's crib. But dignified, rational, good man. <laughs> but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken any more? You know, there is, comes a point when you will make a, ch a choice, where you make your choice, and you will go past a point of no return. Not that the Lord cannot save you or get you out of that, but you have gone so far that you can't go back because your mind and your heart are so warped, okay? Hey, you stupid bloke. You think on your deathbed you're going to repent and go to heaven? We've discussed this, not personally, and I don't feel like being recorded. Um, we've discussed this before. You poor creature, you. That is a shout out to somebody very special indeed, okay? But man will reach a point when he can't come back. Not that the Lord can't grab him, but because his mind and heart are hardened in his pride and they have made the choice to keep going. Hence, they can't come back by their own will. Because remember, remember, yeah, God's not doing this. Neither is Satan doing that. Okay, remember that. Remember that. Okay? Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with Ointment, soundness. I give you sound doctrine. The Lord gives you sound doctrine. The authorized version of the scriptures. But there's no soundness in you. The sound that comes from you is a hollow echo from I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. You poor sop. Sop, son of perdition. We had looked in Genesis chapter 6, which is, you lost people, don't get this, but in a division of time, 
where salvation was totally different than it is today, known as dispensations. Genesis chapter 6 was during the dispensation of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. First dispensation, the Garden of Eden, Eden okay, that stuff. The uh, third dispensation, the dispensation of the law, okay, we saw in Jeremiah showing us that man is not good. What about today? Where enlightened man is, right? Let's go to the favorite verses of the sleazy believers. Nah. The ones that they avoid and hate. Romans chapter 3. The Pauline epistles is specific doctrine for us today. Okay? Specific doctrine for us today. To the Jew first. Also to the Gentile. Okay? The scriptures says Greek but a Greek is a Gentile, someone who is not a Hebraic Jew, okay? All right? But um, as man, man getting better, huh? As it is written, verses 10 on to verse 18. Oh, and sleazy believists hate this. They hate this. As it is written. See, this thing that man is not good and wicked and gets worse, Crosses dispensation lines. I have to agree with Pete Ruckman on this. Why do you think the scriptures usually are black? Because that is darkened by sin. Man is darkened by sin. And without God, there is no hope. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, depart from evil. There is none that seeketh after God, except yourselves, that the heart might discover itself. They are all gone out of the way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And you go out of the way because of entertainment, man. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. I said, I like that purposely. And the way of peace have they not known. Why is that? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Why fear God when you are your own, right? And in Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. For as many as have sinned without, the, without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Okay? What does that mean? As many, for as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. That doesn't mean that you will be innocent. It's just that, you know, the law is there to show you that you can't save yourself. Okay? And see, you might be ignorant of that law, okay, but still sin is sin. Okay? For not the hearers of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these, not, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. What does that mean? Man instinctively knows that there are certain things that are wrong and that are right and that he shouldn't do. Okay? But see, you are flawed in your individual judgment. Okay? And you cannot save yourself because what's the natural thing? Well, okay, if it's already written in our hearts, why do I need God? Because you can't save yourself. Your judgment is flawed. Okay? You are, our imaginations, our hearts are wicked. Period. And in our best state, we are in altogether vanity. Even when we can do the things naturally that we know. It's like, hey, maybe I should, hey, maybe, for example, for example, okay, just an example. Hey, I shouldn't be attracted to my sister or what nonsense. Or, hey, I shouldn't be attracted to an infant. 
Okay? Or hey, I shouldn't be wanting to have relations with the same sex. Okay? That's something in man already. And where does that come from? But see, you got to make the right choices. Okay? And even if you do make those right choices, that still doesn't absolve you of your guilt to God that you are of Adam and Eve. See? There, are, there ain't no innocent people in hell, dear friend. Okay? That doesn't remove the need of salvation. If anything, it heightens it. Because when you know these things and you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, whoo -ho, good luck. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. I have encountered atheists with their little fairy tale stuff who are more moral than some Christians. I have encountered Muslims that are a lot more moral than some Christians. Even some, uh, like the guy over there, even the elderly Catholics who in Catholicism is Satan's religion, even some elderly Catholics have a little bit more of a moral standard than most of the Christians of today. Why do you want to be associated with that? That's your problem, okay? But, all right? But see, the law of God is in the hearts, but you got to make the right choice. But see, even though that is in our hearts, and even if you do try to do the right thing, you still are flawed because man is not good. God is not in all our ways. You don't seek him naturally, even though his laws are there, and you know instinctively that, I, hey, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But see, you got to make the right choice, okay? See, and, and this is the thing that you guys, you lost people, want to skirt. The Lord died because of you. And what do you do? I had not. Yes, you did. You are descended from Adam and Eve. Whether you want to accept that or not, it's irrelevant. You're living a life in sin. You don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe you are your own God and you can save yourself. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. It's that simple. It's that simple. Okay? It's that simple. And even though you might know instinctively certain things of the law, that doesn't remove your need to be saved. Because you can't keep the law perfectly anyway. See how this works? Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness. And their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four. Verses one. One to verse seven. But what has happened? You can't kill your conscience. Hmm? Why is it, especially with like the Sodomite uh, community? Now, some have gone way far where they're not ashamed or anything like that. They, they live in it. But most of the time, most people, when they have those thoughts or they even go to act on it, the guilt that you have. Where does that come from? Over millions of years of evolution? No. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. If it feels good, do it. Just believe. You're elect, okay, uh, because you're uh, elect and non-elect, okay? You got to keep the commandments, blah, 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 okay? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Now, right away, 
you think of Catholicism with celibacy, okay, and also Lent. But, but, Islam commands to abstain from certain meat. Everybody got a problem with poke. Everybody does. It's like, dude, you know what you need to do? You need to get yourself a good greasy uh, cheeseburger or pork chop, wrap that thing in bacon, put some uh, scallops and shrimp on that, and just go to town, buddy. <laughs> okay, all right. If you hey, if you don't want to eat that stuff, that's totally up to you. But when you start commanding people that hey, you know you shouldn't be, you know it's sin. That's where the problem comes in. Okay, this is not relegated just to Rome, even though most of the time most people will think of Rome, and that's good because she's the mother of harlots. But see, it's not just relegated to Rome. The Buddhists. Even the Hindus and one, like I said, the one commonality that these were the, those that are about abstaining from meats, it's all about pork. It's like, what, have, what, what, did you gag on and choke on pork one day or something like that? I don't know. It's, it's like, what, you've never had some good greasy pork like bacon, man? Hey. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Here is where the dietary restrictions were lifted from the Old Testament. People will tell you that the dietary restrictions found in the Old Testament are applicable today. And they'll go to where the Lord says it's like, uh, don't you know anything well, that you put in the body will be cast out into the draught? No. Or they'll go to Peter uh, with his vision of rise, Peter, kill and eat. This, you know, what I've cleansed, call that not common? No. Okay. Right here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, this is where the dietary restrictions have been lifted, and it's okay for you today to eat pork and sh uh, shellfish, uh, scallops, and whatever. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if 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 it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained, attained. Excuse me. Verse 7. And a perfect way to end this. But refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather on to godliness profane and old wives fables millions and billions of years ago man has evolved his morals You don't want to accept this, but that don't matter. You are made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. And God is the one who created you. You are guilty, unless you're saint, saved, you know, not a Christian, okay? You know, never mind about that. Check the community thing uh, where it got the videos um, that's, that's where I stand on that, okay? But, um, you can't blame other people. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. And if you watch this, you're not going to be ignorant. Whether you like it or not, he's going to be your king. What you gonna do about it, boy?